I went on the flight back home. Do you, do you remember that quadruple I gave you? The one that you couldn't cover. You know, these are the things that you want to tell your opponent for them that you would never forget about. <laughs> Absolutely right. It's going to be a long flight back to Moscow for Anton Kokkov. Maxim Hanfrog, well, he flies into the final. Who's going to join him in the men's minus 80s? The second semi final. Milan Beji Hertzigani going against Tony Kanet of Croatia. Well, they've got plenty to live up to after that one. Daniel Horasanjan in charge of proceedings for this one. We've well, been treated to three top class days of Taekwondo, and this is the last semi final of the final day. I love it, it sounds a bit like a DJ, you know, naming you out and you're kind of like, did he just say my name or is that somebody else? He's just got that ethnic into, into that name right there. You know, I, I love it, I love it. I'm going to ask him to call out my name in a minute just to see what it sounds just like. Just to see what it's version of it, yeah. I'm sure we the hand on the hand of the show. We've had and all sorts here, but the big name in the frame. The man from Iran by way now of Azerbaijan. Tony Kanet, European champion, a couple of gold medals on the Grand Prix circuit, and he's going to have to go some. The two-time world champion, an Olympic bronze medalist on the other end of the ring, and we saw Long Patanaki with the flexibility in the clinch. Hachigani's not bad either. He just took, I just steal your thought. He just took, he just literally just stole my phone right there. I was about to say the exact same oh. thing. They oh. are alike, but he's like the male version, yeah. you know, and um, he, he, he's. He's good in that aspect of what he does, and a lot, a lot of players in his wake out game do fear him because of the ability that he has. But I've been watching Tony throughout the day, and he's been very clever against the opponent, you know, beating the likes of Cesar, the Olympic champion, just to get here. And he's just been smart. He's been very, very effective with it all day, and that's why he's in this position right now. For me! And the hammer choke giving us the run down on this one. Who's going to run into the final? Benji Hachigani or Tony Kanet? Much of a much this in terms of physicality. Tony Kanet at 1 meter 93, which is about six foot three. Milad slightly the taller, and there was that hook kick in the clinch. Oh, sorry, the chop kick in the clinch. Oh. Oh. Back leg boot from the Croat. Beautiful, beautiful. Obviously, with the electronic system, it's very sensitive in different areas. So you've got to really be effective on where you take the shots. Sometimes. Oh, beautiful combination right there. And usually you have a feeling out process where they wait and look at each other. I think they've just decided now. Yeah, let's I think just throw have. down here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for it. That's it. Straight from the first whistle. Plenty to cheer about for the Azerbaijan team. What a shot kick that is. Picks it out. Daniel Horasanjan giving the count there. Tony Kanet doing well to ride that shot. Flexibility and power. Beautiful. Another recap moment right there. That was amazing, sensational shot. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I wish I could just replay that moment just yeah, we'll there. Just stop the match and go back to that one. <laughs> A classic chop kick from Beji Hartsigani. Smashes home to the Croatian as we go halfway through this first round. All to fight for, of course. Back kick round oh. the corner as well. He's not wasting any time here, the man in blue. He's not, he's not, he's Kama, he means business. He absolutely means business today. And a big back leg from the man in blue from Baku. That rhymed, by the way. I was trying to make that rhyme. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> just about got there. Six points up now. Half a minute left. The hook kick just missing. And Tony Kanet. Well, if you didn't know about the reputation of the man from Azerbaijan, he certainly knows about it now. Got it, got it. Clock ticking, the dying embers of this first round. And as I say, we've seen a few highlights across the three days here of the Chiba Grand Prix, but none will beat this chop kick. Inkyo Don had an absolute classic yesterday to win it. A bit of a low kick here to the leg. I'm going to let you talk through that chop kick. Yeah, and you know what? Me like has that flexibility. He's able to pull off these type of shots in, in open angles and you're not and you, sometimes you're not expecting it. 
and that's what happened right there. And I'm sure we're going to see the shot in a minute. But it was just, it was just, uh, Tony just found himself in an awkward situation that boom, he just was not ready for that. Just was not ready for that shot right there. Boom. Oh my goodness. Clinical, clinical, clinical shot right there. You know it's fast, but even in slow motion, it's fast. It, it is, you know. But he, 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 and the thing is, when when you get hit in such a way like that, he, it drops your confidence a little bit, and you kind of go a bit in your shell. And I hope, and I hope Tony does not go yeah. into that. I hope he comes out, you know, he comes out strong, and he gives him problems, and he's able to get some points on the ball. Yeah, absolutely, no question about that. Also, credit Daniel Horace and Jarrah referee giving him the count there, giving him a chance to get back to his senses. I sense this one's going to be more of the same. Somebody Six points up. Yeah. Yeah. Benji yeah. Hatch yeah. and he doesn't waste any time, of which the clock has not quite started yet. Too fast even yeah. for the scoreboard. The question is, the shot he did there just before the clock stopped, would it, would it score? Like a true athlete, you're looking for everything you can get. Well, why not? This is a fight. One point could win it all, John. That's the problem here. Too true. Oh. Kind of chasing shadows. Oh. 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 again. You can't. You, I, sometimes I just I don't know what you can do. You know, this, there has been a few athletes who's able to deal with Milan, and you know they kind of find ways of how to fight him and also beat him. But some people just don't know what to do with such with such prolific fighters such as him. Like with his way that he's able to get his leg around him in such a close distance. Oh. Talk about close distance, he was close to that reverse turning kick, gives away the gam jump. But there's an old adage in boxing where they say styles make fights, and the same type of body it's almost like looking in the mirror here. Yeah. So, different body types sometimes you've seen Milad struggle, but someone that's the exact same body type, he just he's got the number, absolutely, absolutely. Like, like I said, it's, it's, it's having a strategy against the type of player like that. What do you do when you're in a clinch? How do you cover this type of shots? How can you keep him at bay? How can you keep him quiet and also be able to be effective and score points against him? And these are the question that you ask yourself when you're in the ring against such a such a caliber of a fighter. And a lot of people do fear already before they even come in. So, if you do go in that element there, it just becomes more complicated. We've seen the likes of Lutelo able to be able to, yes. to fight against players like that. We also saw uh, the no, the no, uh, the Norwegian uh, minus 80. Yep, he was he was able to fight against him as well to try to keep him at bay. Even a career minus 80, uh, he was able to fight against Milad as well. So they found ways of how to fight against these type of fighters. But right now it's just hard for Tony for him to just adjust himself. And he's only got three rounds to do it as well. So it makes it hard when you get hit so earlier on as well. It just you just calm everything down. The confidence goes. You mentioned there Richard Orderman, big Norwegian, and a couple of times and kind of unpicked the quality and broke the code of Beji Harchigani. But Tony can it, well, he cannot get away through there. That kind of job could help. Brings it back to a seven point game with 10 seconds left in what has been an engrossing second round and really a real treat for you to take on the fans wherever you are. Little short on the inside from the creation. And that will do his confidence, the world of good, as he goes back to his coach in the corner, Tony Thomas. And it's something to work on now. Absolutely. That will give him a little bit more confidence coming back out in the second round then. And I think that's what he needs. He just needs to believe in himself, have a little bit more confidence when he gets into the short distance. And also just have his guard up ready because we know Milad in the short distance, he just lift his leg up to your head very easily. So don't so don't don't switch off, don't look at the scoreboard. Look what he did there was look at the scoreboard and he just forgot about himself there. Focus on your opponent 110%. Whatever he does, you're ready to cover it, you're ready to counter that straight away. As I was saying last night with Bianca, the scoreboard cannot kick you, so there's no point in looking at it. Absolutely. That's a good thing. I like that. to use that. You can steal that. <laughs> Put that onto your fee that you've got from the recap show. Oh, sure. I have to. <laughs> she up to $12. <laughs> <laughs> Per minute. That's <laughs> all. I like it. I like it. I like it. Well, well deserved. <laughs> Speaking of per minutes, there's only a couple of minutes left in this one. Is there time for the Croatian Tony Canet to get back into this? He's certainly got the quality. Can he find some high value shots? He's got that back kick that may be useful. Chop kick late. Lands almost over the shoulder. And better for Tony there, just giving him, just giving him some questions to answer, which is good. 
Benji Hachigani in match management mode at the moment, front line counter attempted, holding the centre of the mat, certainly holding the attention of Canet, who cannot get back in for love nor money. Is it going to be bronze for the Croatian? A minute or so will tell us. Well, high tension, high drama. But it's been the high kicks of the man in blue that makes the difference. He's gone a little bit quieter in this third period. A few calls for a gam on there from the Croatian contingent. Yeah, I would give that. He's given us enough entertainment to get away with that one. Well, it's on Canet now, and can he find an answer? 35 in the third. Uh, there's a look that fighters give when they say, yeah, that's as much as I've got to give. And that seems to be the case for the Croat just now. Oh, so you see that then, do you? So you know, you, you know, you know about the look. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a nice look. It's almost like a puppy looking at you thinking, can we just get it done now and just sign the deal? And it's a look that I've given many times when I was fighting, that's what it was. <laughs> so five seconds left, into the final he goes, Milad Beji, Hachigani, textbook stuff. Top class, and Tony Canet, well, he will take the bronze. Credit to the creation, gave everything he had, but this is this man back at his very best. Right now, he's back at his very best. He's back at what he does best. He's, he looks hungry, he looks, he looks motivated, and he just wants to dominate his fight. This is, this is the bit I don't know. You know, when he comes out at this, very, very hard to fight. But what a matchup and what a day of action. Certainly hope you fancy some more because we have finals time now. We'll let you enjoy some of the highlights in silence and then it's on to the finals.